Hi, my name is Sarah, and I'm going to be demonstrating how to perform tracheostomy care. Um, the first thing that you need to do is that you need to verify your physician's orders and make sure that we have all the supplies that we need to be able to do the procedure in the patient's room. So once we have our supply had to the patient's room, you just kind of want to knock on the door, um, do hand hygiene. Do I have some hand hygiene here? Uh, and then we just want to introduce ourselves to the patient. So say, hi, my name is Sarah. I'm going to be your nurse today. And just we need to make sure that we have the correct patient so we'll just ask our patient to say their name and date of birth and just make sure that it corresponds with their hospital bracelet you just want to do this just to make sure that you're doing the correct procedure on the correct patient kind of explain what's going to be happening today during the procedure um answer any questions that they may have explain that this is to remove any secretions from their tracheostomy and uh, it just makes it easier for them to breathe. Questions that they may have and make sure that they're just consenting to have this done. Patient, we can go ahead and start preparing some of, of our equipment. So first thing that we want to do is to make sure that the tubing is connected to the suction machine on the wall. Um, you want to turn the suction machine on, make sure that it's lower than 150 mmHgs. Um, we also want to make sure that the equipment is working properly. So before we attach the catheter, we just want to make sure that it's working right, so you just want to occlude the end of the tubing and just making sure that you are feeling like a suctioning type feel on your finger. Um, then we want to go ahead and increase the patient's oxygen. We want to do this because during suctioning we're kind of removing their oxygen and they're already having trouble breathing so we just want to hyper oxygenate them so we could go up to like, the patient to take a few breaths while we kind of get all of our other equipment ready to do the procedure and this just makes it so the patient doesn't have any respiratory distress. So next, what we want to do is to prepare our disposable suction catheter. And to do this, you want to use a septic technique and just be very careful opening the package. Um, you want to do it on a clean surface, surface, but you just want to do it enough to where you're opening the package enough to expose the connecting end so we can connect the catheter to the suction tubing and then we're going to place a sterile drape on the the table next to the bed um, we will just want to be very careful that the catheter doesn't touch any non-sterile surfaces so only do the inside only place it on the inside of the sterile drape and then we're just going to um, open our tracheostomy kit and be sure to put some normal saline in our kit. Okay, so now I have some sterile gloves. So I've managed the normal saline is already in our, our kit. So we're prepared. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and put all our sterile gloves.
So now we have our sterile gloves. So now we can continue with the procedure. So now we want to be very careful when we are connecting the suction catheter to the connection, the suction connection tubing. Um, you just want to make sure that you're being very careful and maintaining your sterile technique. Um, so with your dominant hand, which is my right hand, um, we want to pick up the suction catheter. So here I have the suction catheter and then we also want to kind of wrap it up in our hands to pre prevent the you know, the other length of it from becoming non-sterile. We just kind of want to wrap it up in our hands. And then with the dominant hand, we want to pick up the connecting tubing and connect it to the suction catheter. I don't really have all the equipment, so we're just pretending. And then we just want to make sure that the dominant hand does not come in contact with the connection tubing. So we also want to make sure that our equipment is working after we connected it. So. Once you've connected it, we can kind of put this in the basin with the sterile water just to make sure it is pulling up the water so we know that it will pull up the secretions once we start doing the procedure. So now that we have all of our equipment ready, we can go ahead and start performing the procedure. Okay. So now we can go ahead and start performing the procedure. So we just want to know that our dominant hand is going to be our sterile hand and our non-dominant hand is going to be our clean hand. So you want to, with the dominant hand, grab your catheter and place it in the tracheostomy tube and just make sure that um, the control vent of the suction catheter catheter is open so it does you know suck correctly so so now we're going to use our non-dominant thumb and depress the control vent of the suction catheter to just to make sure that we're applying continuous suction while completely withdrawing the catheter so first we want to just go ahead and use our dominant hand and place it into the cannula for like 10 to 15 seconds. So we did that for 10 to 15 seconds and then we're going to take it out and then this would be the time that you're going to re-oxygenate the patient because we just did suck some of their oxygen away. So we want to like wait um, 20 to 30 seconds or 60 seconds, however long the patient needs to recover from that. And then we can kind of keep repeating this as many times as we need to. So you'll just you know, put the catheter in here until you meet resistance. Do that for 10 to 15 seconds. And then we'll put our oxygen. This is my pretend oxygen mask and just put that on the patient for 20-30 you know, seconds a minute however much time the patient needs to recover between our suctioning um, so then once we're done with the suctioning we can just place our um, oxygen on the patient and just make sure that it returns to the baseline level. Um, now we just want to make sure that we're assessing the um, secretions that do come out. So just kind of, you know, remember for documentation purposes, like the color, 
of the secretions, consistency, how much there were. Um, you may want to notify your doctor if there was any changes um, in the airway secretions. Um, maybe they're becoming yellow, which could be a sign of infection. Um, so we'll just you know save that information for later when we're going to be documenting after the procedure. So now, since we're done with our suctioning, we're just going to kind of wrap our catheter in our hand, and then we're going to pull off our, our glove, and just make sure that the catheter remains inside the glove. Just so we're keeping all of the nasty stuff inside of our glove for when we throw away later. There my clothes. I'm just gonna put it over here, and we'll just keep that over there for when we're gonna be cleaning up our station. So now we want to do hand hygiene again, and then we're gonna re-put on some new sterile gloves. So I had my hand sanitizer heated. Redo our hand hygiene and then re put on our sterile gloves. Okay, so I have my new sterile gloves on. Um, you may need um, other PPE if you think that um, secretions are going to be splashing or anything like that. If I don't think I need it in my case. Um, so now we just want to remove the new cannula from the packaging and now we're going to take out the old cannula and replace it with the new cannula. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your dominant hand stitch up right here. So we're just going to withdraw the cannula with my dominant hand. I'm just carefully taking out the cannula. Sometimes you have to twist kind of depending on the cannula that you have. And so I have my cannula here. I'm just going to look at it, um, inspect it for the secretions, um, you know, just take notice of what it looks like, if there's any that looks thick, if it looks thin, what color it is, how much there is, and dispose of the contaminated cannula in um, the right trash. Okay, so now that I threw my old cannula away, I'll just grab a new cannula and reinsert it into the tracheostomy. Um, so you'll just need to insert it and kind of twist it. It kind of just depends on the mechanism. So now that we have our new cannula in place. Um, you can reapply oxygen um, if that is prescribed. Um, so sometimes there's not always a disposable cannula. So if you don't have a disposable cannula, we'll just have to clean the cannula in order to reuse it and reinsert it. Okay, so if you don't have a disposable cannula. So we'll just take the cannula right here and just carefully hold it on the outside and then you'll just kind of dip it in the normal saline and this you just want to do this to try to kind of loosen the secretions. So we'll drop the cannula in the sodium chloride and then 
and then we'll um, just kind of clean it with the brush that is in our kit. So we'll just clean it, dip that, and just kind of clean the outside, clean the inside, and just try to remove all the secretions that are on the tube. And then we'll put it back in the normal saline. And before you clean the cannula, you can put the ox oxygen back on the patient if they are losing their O2 stat fast. And before you clean the um, cannula, you also want to remove your gloves and perform hand hygiene again. And then you want to put on sterile gloves again. And then once you've done that, we can kind of go back to the cannula in the in the saline and just clean it with the brush again. So we'll just do the outside and the inside of the tube. Just kind of pour some more normal saline over it so it gets all the secretions off of the cannula. And then once you're done cleaning the cannula, you'll just reinsert it like I showed earlier while we were doing the disposable cannula. So now that um, we're done replacing or cleaning the cannula for the tracheostomy, um, we can kind of start cleaning around the stoma and change the dressing. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to clean around the tracheostomy. So first we want to just kind of remove all of our drainage sponge because this is now dirty. Just gonna hold that in place and remove that and throw that away. And now we want to grab a um, cotton tipped applicator soaked in the normal saline and kind of just start cleaning around the stoma. You want to clean in a circular, so I dip this in normal saline. So we'll just kind of you know, clean around the cannula and then we'll clean around the stoma. So we just kind of do it in circular motions and you want to um, go away from the stoma. And you want to clean about like two inches away from the stoma extending from the stoma, so just do like go outward in a circular motion. And you can use as many cotton tip applicators as you need. And once they become dirty, just make sure to dip them in the normal saline and just continue cleaning. And throw those away once you are done. And then once we've cleaned the area, we can go ahead and dry the skin with some gauze that is in the um, that's in the kit. So we'll just dry the exposed skin that's a little moist from our cleaning, and throw that away. And then once we kind of cleaned everything, we want to go ahead and replace the drain pad under the tracheostomy area. So now we're going to replace the drain pad. Put that under. Okay, so now we replace the drain pad, and now we just need to make sure that everything is in place and replace the um, 
the strap holding everything together. Um, so you want to do this by using the tube holder method. So you just want to make sure you have like, a strong hold on the tracheostomy tube and just kind of release the tube. Um, it should be Velcro, so you just be able to tear off the Velcro on either side of the tube and take off the old one and then replace it with a new one. Um, I don't have that equipment, so I can't really show you, but you do um, just make sure that the narrow end of the ties are under um, and through the the main source of the center of it and just make sure that you're pulled the ends even and then you secure them back on velcro um, and just to verify that you're not impeding circulation you just want to make sure that two um, fingers are able to um, go through it just to make sure that it's not too tight for the patient and then once we do that we can kind of reposition the patient make sure that they're comfortable um, assess the their respiratory status so make sure they're not having any trouble breathing make sure their respirations are within um, the normal range um, just ask them how they're feeling um, if they need anything um, like they, if they need to go to the bathroom, if they need anything in the room, um, if they're hungry or need a drink or you know, just make sure that they're comfortable. And now we're going to go ahead and remove our gloves and discard them. Um, now we're just going to kind of clean up our area. Um, so we'll just make sure that the normal saline we'll just you know put the cap back on and then we'll just kind of write on here with the sharpie when we opened it in our initials um, just so that the next person knows um, when it was open and that it's not expired um, and just replace it where it's supposed to go um, like I said we just want to help the patient in a comfortable position, um, put their personal items within reach, the call bell within reach, dispose of you know all of our supplies in the correct receptacles, um, dispose of our gloves, doing hand hygiene again. Do I have hand hygiene here? We're just gonna do hand hygiene, and after this. We can start documenting our procedure and how the patient tolerated the procedure. If they're having a rough time um, going through the procedure, um, having trouble breathing, um, you know, what the mucus or the circulations look like, what color, the consistency, how much. Um, so once we've documented the procedure, we're all we're all finished with our procedure and um, you know you just want to make sure that the patient is comfortable and has everything that they need um, thank you um, I hope you enjoyed our COVID quarantined demonstration